When drawing walls, Revit usually does a really nice job of connecting all of the walls together and giving you nice clean joints. But sometimes you actually want to customize the automatic joints that are created. So in this movie, I'd like to talk about editing wall joints. So I've got a few examples that I want to share with you here in this floor plan, and I'm going to zoom in in this upper right-hand portion of the plan to talk about it. So the first example is here where I've got this masonry wall meeting with this other wall right here that doesn't have the masonry. Typically what I would want is the masonry to take uh, precedence over the non-masonry construction here, but as you can see, it's the opposite. So editing wall joints allows us to toggle which wall is taking precedence over the other one. So if you go to your Modify tab, you're looking for the Edit Wall Joins command. It's here on the Geometry panel. And what this command allows you to do is to kind of click at an intersection, and it will sort of highlight it with the little square there. And when you click, that will activate the Options bar. And then on the Options bar, you'll have several choices available to you. Now, it's really simple to customize this Join condition. It's defaulting to a Butt condition, which makes sense here. I mean, you could switch to Miter, but that's really not the appropriate connection. So Butt is what we want. We just simply want to reverse which wall is dominant. So you've got these Next and Previous buttons right here that you can use to toggle the joint and change which wall is dominant. And then I'm still in the command. I can switch to a different intersection, click Next again, and that takes care of those two connections. Now, if I'm done editing wall joins, I simply click the Modify tool to cancel out. It's important that you remember to do that because if you don't, you're still in the Wall Joins command and you'll try and select other objects and actually Revit will think you're still editing wall joins. So always pay attention to what command you're in and remember to click the Modify tool to get out of that command when you're finished. All right, I actually have two other conditions that I want to look at here. Both of these closets have these really sharp corners. So another option that's available to us in Edit Wall Joins is to be able to square off those sharp conditions. So if I choose square off here, that's exactly what it'll do, is it'll just sort of blunt that corner. Now, I can blunt it in that one direction there, or I could click Next and blunt it that way. It's really up to me. I can choose whichever one I like better switch conditions, square it off. Assuming I'm happy with that, that's fine. Otherwise, I could do next and next to toggle through the variable options. Now, the final option that you want to consider here is disallow join. So the way this would look is if I choose that, it'll actually completely ignore that join. And if I cancel out of the command, now you could see this grip here. It's as if this wall wasn't even connected. If you want that condition where two walls butt into one another but don't actually join up, then that's an option as well. You have to choose disallow join. Now, you can get that after the fact using the edit wall joins. You can also get that while you're drawing a wall in the first place. So if I go to the wall command, allow and disallow join is available here on the options bar while you're drawing. That's a pretty special case and probably not what I want in this condition. So I'm actually going to go back to modify and reset this back to allow join so that that cleans up again. But in some cases, like commercial plans where you have the interior wall touching the exterior wall or the building core or something like that, you might want to choose disallow join.